Hi guys, I'm Rich and I am one third of Wanderbus Adventures. This week has been interesting. Beginning with a simple tidy up and install of fuse boxes and a voltage stabiliser. If that max air is duff, I am going to cry. By Jingo, I didn't think it was my fault, it was my fault. Quickly redeeming myself by building this relay box. Then we had a disaster in the house and finally came up with a solution for our wardrobe door. So all of that's coming up. Please give us a like and a comment. Hope you enjoy. The first thing I need to do today is sort out this electrics cupboard. Out back, we've got all of our power plant, if you like, and a lot of it back there um, is all nice now, neat and tidy. In here though, I have a lot to sort out. So I need to run some trunk in. I need to install my 12 volt fuse boxes. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut my conduit. I just think it'll look neater and maybe make it a bit more future proof. And the stuff we've got left is the blue stuff. And I don't really mind that because it's going to be in a cupboard anyway. I've gone for these blue C fuse boxes and we've got two of them. Uh, reason being is these are really robustly made. We're going to install in two of these so we can run basically all our 12 volt stuff off of almost all single circuits. So they mount on the back panel with just four screws. Fairly straightforward. And we're going to pop them in the middle of our conduit. I'm also fitting this disconnect switch for my DC side. Those of you who have watched our other videos will know that I've got a Victron um, disconnect that basically does the same job as this. But with this, what it will mean is because it's wired further upstream, I know that if this is switched off with a mechanical switch, I can do it without needing to use the app. And I know that it's all off. And then the stuff that's downstream, because I do have another fuse box in the back, will still run, like the diesel heater and stuff like that. And I'm gonna put it down underneath my fuse boxes. The first wires I'm gonna sort out is actually the ones to wire up the fuse boxes. So the negative and the positive cable that I've got here, I'm gonna run the negative one up first along the top and then wire one fuse box to the other. It's already got a cutout in the side of the lid. All right, so I've got my crimps, Strippers, lugs, heat shrink. A lot of mess because it's muddy today. Let's get cracking. Working in this tiny cupboard was a little bit painful, but we soon came together. Quick anatomy of a blue C switch. So you've got on the front a dial with off and on on it. On the back, you have your input and your output. And when you screw these in, they have to be slightly angled to go into the housing. It's going to go here we are starting to win honest um so the fuse boxes are wired up now and to test them i'm going to wire in a thing so the only thing really that we've got in here at the moment that we can use is the max air um but quite rightly and really thankful for it uh pete and a couple of other people in past videos have said run it through a voltage stabilizer. So I've got one here. What this basically does is it takes a feed from the fuse box, runs it through this stabilizer and gives you a constant 12 volts out the other end. And that's important apparently because on some of the Max Airs, the fuse board that's in there or the computer board or whatever it is, doesn't like the fluctuation, especially when it goes above sort of the, the 12 volt limit. So I'm gonna install this now Basically, the red and black wire goes to your fuse box, and then the yellow and black wire goes to the Max Air. So I'm gonna put, extend these two tails now, pop it in on here and wire it to my fuse box and the Max Air wiring that's there, and then we'll see if it works. Let's see. Strip. On this side, you've got, obviously the black is the negative. So I'm gonna pop that in there. Is this yellow one here, which is the 12 volt constant positive. Okay, the wired in, no fuse yet, obviously. Before we put that on, I'm gonna get my multimeter and just check that these fuse boxes work, and then we're gonna put a fuse in there, the cable itself. I just want to make sure that that's protected. That probe on there, and that probe on there. And then, have a look. 
looking good. We've got charge at the moment, so we're 13.84 because we're charging. And that's the precise reason why you need the uh, voltage stabilizer for the Max Air. So let's just turn that off, put a fuse in, check it works. The answer is no, this isn't good. Back to the multimeter. For, that should work. There's no reason why it shouldn't. The only thing I can think that's happened is two things. So either the voltage stabilizer I've got is not working properly or I've wired it up to the wrong cable coming out the other end, which I don't think is the case because I had it labeled. There is power and it is 12.15 coming out of there. Uh, so the problem is between here and the max air. So it's either I've got it hooked up to the wrong one Oh, these connections weren't good. You can see that they are. This is most uncool. If that max air is duff, I'm going to cry. I have to try and pull some cable out from the max air and see if I've got current up there. Usually when I do this sort of thing, I put it all on a little Wago box first. But I thought today, it's so straightforward, I won't. I wish I had, but I'm just going to put these temporarily back in on Wagos and fault find. Frustrating this. Frustrating! Some good and some bad news. We have 12.15 volts running up to there. The bad news is, I think that might mean that the max air fan is already broken. So you remember in earlier videos, we did use it in the very hot days. Um, it was working fine, but it seems to have stopped. But this is really not ideal, to be honest. I then decided to take the max air completely apart and gave it a clean. This turned out to be completely unnecessary, which I'll explain later. So yeah, the max air fan is a real kick in the pants, but let's sort some of this other wiring out. So at least we achieved something today. Each incoming feed was labelled, crimped, and I used fork connectors. And I found those easiest to use. Those work much better as predicted, so that is what I recommend to use. And say hi Lou. Hi guys. Me and Lily have got colds. Yeah, we do. Wait. Little Ginger uh, has a bad leg, so she can't come and see you guys today. Okay. Off the back of that breaking, we're going to move on actually to doing something a little bit different. But more on this later, we will get this fixed. We're going to have a bunch of things that are going to run through relays. We're going to have the tank heater, the second thing from the servo, I'm not sure what yet. The water pump, fridge, gas solenoid and some other bits and bobs. Gas solenoid probably doesn't need to run through a relay, but basically the reason I'm going to do it is I can run this four core cable up to where our control panel will go and not have to run basically six mil cable up for the water pump and this, that and the other. This will be at the bottom of the cupboard and I can put this up in the top of the cupboard and then hopefully it will look a lot neater. You can this kit came with all of the relays but none of the wiring. So I set about adding all of that myself, um, labelled it up and then this is basically the end result. I'm not going to cover it in too much detail but you can see here that I've got all of the tails that I need and we also managed to make some stuff out of clay in the interim. These will run to all of our loads. This will go on a power post and this goes to the relays. We're ready to install the relay thingy now, although the label printer has broken. So that's two things that have broken this week. However, Steph from RXL UK has emailed me and, and given me a couple of things to check. And I hope the most simple one which would be totally my fault, is what's gone wrong. Hopefully I'm about to eat humble pie. I'll be really pleased if it is this. Oh, it is this! So there you are. When you wire up your Max Air fan and bury the cables deep in your wall, it's black is your positive. So black to red in our case in the UK. Uh, that's really turned the frown upside down for me actually. So I'm happy to share that, especially if it makes you laugh because by Jingo, I didn't think it was my fault. It was my fault. 
But second of all, hopefully it stops anyone else doing the same thing. And it's running through the voltage stabiliser fine. Um, and that should keep it nice and healthy. Thank you, Steph, for helping me out with that absolute star right i'm actually really pleased with this guy next thing i need to do is put it on its mountain brackets and then get it installed in the bus and then you can see here i've got two tails basically that's going to attach to a power post that i'm going to put underneath and then that way we've got a big fat cable running down to this to power it and also an earthing point for the things that are going to run off from there i'm just going to wire up this fat cable down to it and this will be good for carrying um basically up to 60 amps which we won't ever be pulling through here but obviously we want to be able to deliver that amount to it so i put it in at the bottom here on power posts and then these will be covered eventually and then that way over here i've got a negative post here to basically earth all of the things that are going to come out from this lower point so it is a little bit complicated but it will mean that i don't have to run all of this stuff up into here the next set of wires to sort out is for the servo relays so we've got relay one and two here that i've already run i'm just going to chop these to size and then hook them up to here and these are the trigger wires for the servo they're then going to come back and trigger these relays so i've almost got double relay set up i think i could have got away with um just literally using the servo just to be cautious i'm going to use that relay in the servo to trigger these relays for my tank blankets and then that way in the future if i decide to swap those out for anything that uses higher amp draw it won't matter because they're being powered via this right the relays are fixed to the servo now relay to relay and i've got one more cable down here that i need to fit up at the moment and it's for the gas solenoid the gas it actually sell this little doohickey here which basically reduces the current draw from something like 1.2 amps to keep the solenoid open to 0 0.007 of an amp which obviously is good news because it means when you're using your gas you're using a lot less electricity so i'm going to hook this up it's all right so i've got a fuse in the top fuse box to feed this switch i've got a fuse in the relay i've got it all hooked up yes do you hear it open that oh, was it closing hear it open cracking that's cracking so basically I'm, I'm set up now to be able to wire everything up here later on i'm going to come up with a really neat uh, layout for our control panel that's going to be up here at eye level so saying it's working i'm going to wait until my label maker has been returned to me fixed before i do the rest of the stuff at the top so i've just jammed it in that top conduit for the time being but you can see the before and after are quite dramatically different and it, cosmetically it looks much better but there's been a lot of work that's gone into that um, and a few personal triumphs, which has been nice. The next thing I'm going to do is fit the door on here. And in a typical fashion, I've decided not to do it in a straightforward way. What have we got? We've got these. So these are basically sliders that allow you to make a pocket door. Um, and the first thing that you need to do is to cut a strip of wood, the same depth as your door to line this part here and that's what your hinges will screw into so we're going to cut that first next i'm going to attach the slides to the follower strip using some screws now that these are on i've measured to make sure they're perpendicular i'm going to fit them in here with some self-tapping screws so i've just cut this strip to go underneath the bottom slider just so i can get it level i'm going to pop this under and then use some packing strips to make sure it's basically where it needs to be. Front's on and spaced. I'm now going to try and attach the hinges. Um, a couple of ways I could do this. I haven't never done it before. Um, I'm going to try and attach them from the back because I can. I used three flat faced hinges on the front making sure they were spaced. Right, okay, so I do need to sort the spacing out a bit. There's a little bit of fiddling to do. I need to bring it over a mill. But this is basically how it works. 
once the handle's on it, it'll be easier. Ta-da! And it's in there. So granted, we'll have to, we'll have to open the door from in, in here to be able to get that to go in there. Um, because, you know, you can't stand here and do it, probably. Well, you probably can, because we're not going to hear, but it's accessible. You have to bend down to undo it like a tambour door. And it goes. I am thrilled with that. Ha ha! Yesterday, we went out for a couple of hours and a couple of things happened. First and foremost, the toilet was blocked, not guilty. Then, for some reason, decided to fail and keep running. When we came back, the house was flooded. We've had to tear up all the carpet downstairs and the house is drying out at the moment. So, less than ideal. However, we also managed to get a rail and install that up here. And I've added these little notches in, you can see up in the top corner, just to stop them moving about. And this works a treat. Handles are on their way. So there's been a few ups, downs in between this week, but we're overall pretty happy with this. Kelly is feeling a bit better. Um, hopefully we'll be back on the next video. Hope you have a great week. Take care of yourselves. See you soon.